So let me go ahead and share my screen meanwhile. And the, again, the question of Millennium. I hope you guys can see my screen, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Yes, I can. Yeah. Great. 501, 122 people. Let me give it 30 more seconds because we have to cover the contest uh, details. So I don't want people to miss out. And people are already raising hands. Put your questions in our Q&A tab, guys, and we will get to that. Okay, let's get started. It's 5.01 and going to be 5.02. So good evening, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you are joining in. Thanks for joining Elite CISO's weekend webinar this time because you know uh, our typical webinars on, are on Thursday every week, 11 o'clock India time. But since the lockdown has been lifted in India, we are trying to do the weekend webinars as well. This at least gives an opportunity to our members, to our participants to stay indoor because if you go out and socialize, you never know about the corona situation, right? So that's why we are trying to do weekend webinars as well at five o'clock Saturday India time. So thanks for joining in guys. I see about 136 people right now. So that's a very good number. Thanks a lot. As you can see, the topic is the business need for achieving security at the point of data. And if you look at the last line, the last line says, never pay a ransom. That's very interesting because we have done so many webinars with different technology vendors around how to defend from ransomware, right? This is another webinar, but how it is different in all the previous webinars, we have talked about the technology like EDR, XDR and all, how do you defend the endpoint? But we have not talked about how do you defend the data itself? So that's going to be very different and uh, different thought process. So to share the knowledge around this, we have Ritesh and So joining us from Rubrik. So uh, Ritesh and So, can I have a quick 10 second introduction before I move forward with the agenda? Yeah, thanks Vikalji. So good evening, everybody. Good evening, friends. Uh, firstly, thanks for taking your time on the weekend. Uh, my name is Ritesh Gupta. I'm based out of Mumbai and I head the country business for Rubrik India. Thank you, Vikalji. So over to you. Yeah, good evening. Uh, thank you everyone for having me. I'm so head of uh, system engineering supporting a uh, rubric Asia region. Uh, glad to be here uh, today in a lighthearted mode uh, Saturday evening. So relax. I hope to be able to give you uh, an insightful and uh, informative uh, session. Thanks. Thanks so for having me. Much appreciated. Okay, let me start with the agenda. Uh, okay, if it moves forward, yeah, great. So as you see on the agenda right now, let me move this floating pen a bit. So it's a quick introduction as we do initial five minutes and then we will have a quiz. In the quiz, we will have two questions and it is going to be fastest finger first. So even if you don't know the answer, you are a Google expert, do a Google, put the answer, put the full answer, right? If you just give a short answer or an abbreviation, that's not going to help. We need the full answer, okay? So that's what the quiz is going to be. Then 505 to 550, we will have rubric session. So Ritesh and So will talk about how do you defend from ransomware, what the backup strategy should be, and they will talk about a rubric offering around that. So at the end, uh, at 5.50 to 6.10, we have extended our time a little bit today to 6.10 because there's a lot to cover. There's a contest as well. So I wanted to give 10 extra minutes for this session. So uh, at the end, we will have question answer. So you can... You don't have to wait till the end for the question answers, right? So you see Q&A tab on your Zoom interface. If you have a question in between, go ahead and put that question in the uh, Q&A box or Q&A tab. We have Mridul and Harish joining us from Rubrik as well. They will keep on answering whatever questions you may have. I will share the CPE password so that you can download the participation certificate. This CPE secret for today's webinar is going to be very important because this is linked with the contest, okay? We will have Wheel of Fortune and as part of Wheel of Fortune, the giveaway today is Apple AirPods. So uh, thanks Rubrik for sponsoring Apple AirPods and we do not have just one AirPods, we have got five AirPods to give away this time. So that's great. Uh, and then we will open the registration for next week as well. 
and the session is being recorded slides will be available all the previous uh, recording previous slides have been posted on elite ciso's website so if you go to the website and look under events past event section you will see uh, the recording and the details over there okay so one apple airpod as part of wheel of fortune what about the rest four okay rest four are going to be with a contest and that's going to be a linkedin contest this time because last time we did twitter contest and it took our attention away from the session that's what the feedback we got so this time we are doing a linkedin contest and we are doing it in a little different manner so i see about 174 people right now this information about the contest is required to participate okay guys so see what you got to do to participate in this contest first one is follow elite ciso's handle on linkedin i'm sure you know how do you how to follow somebody on linkedin so go to linkedin follow elite ciso's handle that's a step one step two is follow rubric handle on linkedin again you you can simply go to linkedin and search for rubric follow the rubric handle on linkedin that's a step two step three is going to be share a post on linkedin right and what do you got to share you have to post the participation certificate that you will get out of this session and the second thing is when you post the certificate you have to post the learning from this session what what ritesh and so are going to cover in next 45 50 minutes you have to take very good notes of those learnings and those learnings you have to post on linkedin along with the certificate okay when you post that post uh, tag elite ciso and rubric as well so very very simple step follow elite ciso handle follow rubric handle post the participation certificate on linkedin with your learning that's most important because we want you guys to be focused on the session so take good notes uh, from the session and post that on linkedin tag elite ciso and rubric and submit the completion form with url of your post so note down the url of your linkedin post and then you have to send that url in a form a completion form a google form that we will share at the end of the session okay very simple if you have a confusion you can whatsapp me or you can put it on the chat we will clarify that okay that's about it it's very simple step and then uh, rubric and elite ciso will review the submission in terms of what you post on linkedin and we will pick four people four best entries for the learning and then uh, apple airpods will be given away to those four uh, best posts that are that are going to be there on linkedin okay top 100 posts will be considered right so we have about 183 people right now so you have to be fast right you have to be agile so uh, top 100 posts with good learning it is not that just to you just post the certificate and say great session rubric great session elite see so it is not going to work like that so you have to actually post good learning from this session okay and we will pick a uh, top four out of it okay if you have to do all this right you have to participate in a quiz you have to participate in a contest you have to be very alert and how you can be alert you can be alert with our stand and attend challenge which is what we throw in every webinar that we do why stand and attend because if you sit the entire day right this is a weekend you might be lying down over a weekday you might be just sitting on your chair so if you are sitting for the entire day you will get foggy brain strain neck and everything i mean we do not want that how you can stay sharp you can stay sharp by standing like i am standing right now we want you to participate and win the contest we want you to win the the quiz which is going to come next so stand you will think sharper and you will be able to focus better on the session okay guys so this is a challenge to everyone including the panelists as well i'm not sure if you have set up to accept this challenge in a panelist uh, 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 your setup or not uh, but yeah from the participants 191 participants right now type yes if you are taking this challenge Mini is asking a question, so it should be a single post, not multiple post. Okay, I can see a lot of people. And when you say yes or when you answer, select that it should not go to panelist only. It should go to panelist and all participants because when you answer for the quiz, some answers just come to panelist. Great. So I can see a lot of people are posting, accepting this challenge. Great guys, thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. Okay, cool. Next, we are getting into the quiz. Okay, guys, be attentive now. and with this quiz 
you have to be fastest finger first you have to find the answer and give the full answer on the chat window okay guys i am going for it now first question name the technology included in microsoft windows that can create backup copies of snapshots of computer files or volume even when they are in use 30 second you will get to answer and you have to answer the full full very nice i see the i have already seen the answer great so the answer is volume shadow copy service okay this is the correct answer and this answer and these questions are very specific to the topic because we are talking about defense from ransomware so if the ransomware is not smart enough they do delete the volume shadow copy as well if they are smart ransomware but if they are dumb ransomware you can still restore your data from a volume shadow copy service all you got to do is configure it okay guys uh, so i think there was the right answer we will look at the chat backup and we will find out who the who gave the first full right answer if you just said vss that's not the right answer okay second question is name the feature in windows operating system that protect files folders and memory area on your device from unauthorized change by unfriendly application okay this is again linked to the ransomware and i see answer coming in no it's not windows defender i still do not see the right answer 30 second are going to get over pretty soon and i think this will be a learning for you guys from a answer perspective yeah i see a right answer coming in great so the answer is controlled folder access okay guys if you are not aware about controlled folder access free option go to your windows 10 or windows uh, server whatever you got and turn on the controlled folder access which will restrict the access to the certain files and folder that you got okay with this i see 198 people right now thanks for joining on a on a weekend uh, evening so i think my part is done now over to ritesh and uh, so for the session thanks a lot guys thank you thank you vikas thank you it was an interesting session and in fact even i learned you know <laughs> so i was not aware about the second half the second half so yeah. okay so alisha can you can you just present the slides alisha also yeah so yeah yep. okay yeah so uh, thanks again uh, friends and uh, thank you for taking out time on the weekend Uh, just to reintroduce myself because I saw a lot of people joining me. My name is Ritesh Gupta. I head the country business for Rubric India, <clears throat> and I am based out of Mumbai. I mean, in the current pandemic when a lot of people are working from home, it's, it becomes very important to to tell you tell you know or update about the location. Uh, so uh, what we uh, thought that we would present some different uh, perspective here. I think when it comes to security or uh, ransomware i think you know most of the times the focus is on the front end and the focus is on the entry points on how to secure the entry points now it can be with with uh, firewalls it can be you know a lot of uh, you know anti virus uh, solutions a lot of security solutions in general but what we thought about is why not focus on the back end indirectly why not focus on your insurance policy i mean when we even cross the road we we are attentive right that we are crossing it properly there are no accidents but guys if something goes wrong and i mean there are things which are not in our control then where is our insurance policy is our insurance policy secure you know are are we being are we in the right hands you know so that is super critical so that's why we thought that we would focus on the protection part with specific uh focus around the protection from ransomware attack because i think in last one year we have been hearing a lot of such you know uh, in the news article in us in europe in fact in india when i you speak to uh, you know a lot of customers i mean ransomware attack uh, uh, trust me is coming as an important point today as a discussion uh, i mean hybrid cloud private cloud public cloud is always there but this is becoming a very interesting boardroom uh, discussion topic uh, next slide please so so this is one interesting uh, uh, you know article i was reading uh, i was going through this website computer weekly uh, uh, article on linkedin and this is something which i i personally found this as a bit shocking there was some kind of a new job profile which they were mentioning in security domain so next uh, yeah so actually the article said i don't know if anybody has gone through the article that the profile was this profile was available in the dark web ecosystem the profile clearly said 
you know that the person should be good in english speaking up so the next down arrow please now this is awesome okay hold on so this this is now critical the remuneration for the person was close to 1 million dollars to 5 million dollars so if i have to convert in indian rupees you know the organizations are ready to pay 7 crores to 10 crores as a indian i am mean, just converting into ina and they call this as a specialist pro okay any guesses so just put one down arrow okay any any guesses here i mean if somebody can put in chat or q and any guesses what is the role definition anybody i mean, we don't have much time maybe i'll give 5 seconds for anybody to think about it but i was surprised yeah yeah somebody who wrote negotiator i mean I'm, you know, the person who wrote negotiator is very close to it so next slide please i mean just down arrow yeah so this is what you know is the new role definition or the new avatar which i'm seeing in the market a ransomware negotiation specialist a person who speaks english who knows how to negotiate well you know and obviously it you will not see this in in, in a normal uh, world today but yeah the the reason this this particular role is becoming super critical today is because of two reasons uh, just so the next part is of course hackers want to use such people to negotiate with their clients and secondly uh, so just down arrow it helps the insurance companies to negotiate with hackers so today's world as i'm speaking the ransomware protection is becoming super critical and that is where you know uh, what so will do today is will present as to how rubric can help customers to protect their data from ransomware attacks so before that i'll not take much time but yes i'll introduce rubric to everybody on what we do so so next slide please so uh, just proud to say that the company was formed by four indians uh, around 8 years back so bipul sinha arvind nitro arvind jain and swam majumdar four indians all iitians so the company was formed 8 years back and the, the the thought process behind to start rubric was to to do kind of a transformation or a new thought process around data protection so when we speak about and when so takes his uh, you know presentation as to what rubric does obviously we'll throw light on that so as we speak in just 8 years we were termed as the fastest unicorn or the fastest startup in the silicon valley today as we speak we have close to 3500 customers across the globe around 2000 employees more than 200 customers have given 1 million dollar business to us and if you see the right side that's that's the, the background of the organization so we are funded by lightspeed ventures greylock brain capital and kosla ventures and if you see the below the prominent investors include john chambers john thompson and lastly frank shukman who is the current ceo okay so that that's the background of the organization and as we speak in india we have around 400 people in india in bangalore so they comprise of you know the r and d engineering the support team we call bangalore as a second headquarters after the united states so that's about rubric india we have a team of 10 people in india from sales and as i said i i handle the i head the sales for for rubric so that was a kind of a, a basic introduction on to rubric uh, so the next slide yeah uh you know a lot of you know a lot of times this this uh, accolades are super critical i mean this questions do come to us that uh, you know where does rubric stand on the gartner's leader quadrant or in the forest survey so we are the fastest company to enter the leader quadrant of gartner's we are also there in the forest survey way and lastly if you see we have already got you know so many awards we are also named in the forbes cloud 100 uh, as a top company there so these are few of the things uh, you know the basic introduction of rubric of what we do who we are and over to so so over to you now on the main topic of today on protection from that thank you thank you ritesh uh, that was a insightful intro um before we i kick start the the session going a little bit into a technical discussion let's have a look at the uh, you know a testimony from a customer on friday evening the city of durham data networks experienced a serious cyber malware malware attack which is entire network ransomware attacks are test resolve of cities New across Orleans america the city government has been hit for us cities have been attacked by ransomware cyber attack is hit in us city can be assured that our, our backups 
are very good because they're immutable, which means that ransomware cannot consume our backups. We're using a, a product called Rubik. Right, that was a uh, sort of a testimonial from a, a customer, right? So today is a very interesting uh, topic, uh, a discussion into uh, security at a point of data as what um, I think um, Ritesh mentioned earlier. Uh, many times we talk about, you know, uh, how do we prevent the cyber intrusion kill chain, right? Straight away from uh, reconnaissance, weaponizations, and, and all the way to the expectations of data. Uh, but one thing that uh, we are very sure that you cannot be 100% sure there will never be a uh, bad actors, there will never be an uh, infiltration in your environment, right? So, and we have seen that over the past uh, few years, right? So, and that's the reason why we are here. So without further ado, let's have a look uh, at the current state of uh, ransomware attacks over the past one to two years. Uh, I believe what might have caught your attention might be, uh, you know, what's at the top of the chart, right? So it's actually in there. So this, the survey is actually commissioned by Sophos, right? So it's conducted across multiple uh, verticals across 30 over countries, right? And uh, we have very uh, a few different uh, key findings that I'll be uh, going through slightly in a short while, right? So um, the country that's encountered the most uh, numbers of attacks, uh, India comes at the top. So you might see different uh, kind of findings and survey reports uh, by different uh, analysts and different uh, organizations. So some of the interesting uh, findings, right? So even though you have 96% of those data that was encrypted and, and for those who have gotten back the data, but however, on average, only 65% of the encrypted data was restored after the ransom was paid, right? And with 29% getting back, not more, no more than half of the data, right? So that is something, uh, a signal into, you know, the last line of defense, how are we preparing? Uh, what's the ransomware remediation plan? And of course, in, in, in terms of the average payout, we know that uh, I think due to the recent high profile uh, ransomware attacks, the, the average ransomware payout is uh, ever increasing. Right, it could be uh, still on the move, on the rise as we as we speak uh, right here. And what's uh, really exacerbating the the situation is really the extortion style that has really changed. So not necessarily the bad actors has to encrypt uh, your data. The extortion style applies to environment where data was not even encrypted, uh, but the victim was still held ransom. To more, and, and that statistics, right, is actually uh, have, having a more than doubled since uh, last year, right, up from a three to seven percent, right. So, and it's very important for us to really have a, a well-trained IT staff uh, who really understand and, uh, and to be able to assess the magnitude of the impact when it comes to ransomware remediation. So, I I, I was uh, raising a, a statement uh, just now saying that uh, unless you're hundred percent sure, there can never be a, a bad actor never be uh, any uh, breach or uh, infiltration in your environment. So just feel free to uh, highlight, put into the chat if you think otherwise, and what kind of uh, plans that you have uh, in, in your organization. So uh, let's tee up a little bit and look at, um, you know, how the ransomware play out in some of the environments that we are observe. And of course, um, you know, um, ransomware attacks, you will be able to go through the end and, uh, you know, uh, get cross across the uh, entire cyber intrusion intrusion kill chain, and that's where it gets into the uh, the data itself, which is the key objective of the uh, the bad actors, the key objective of the ransomware. It locks down the data, and the next thing you know, uh, you get a ransomware note, right? So you receive a note, and of course, many organizations start to panic uh, whether you know you have the capabilities to really recover uh, data, the mass data at scale, right? So whether you are attempting to pay or to recover the data, right? So as to not to be, uh, be held ransom. And very often we see these two group of, uh, these two different roles uh, coming together, trying to assess the magnitude of impact. 
right? Perform forensic, uh, perform the restoration of data, trying to find out where um, those impacted systems uh, are and uh, where are those backup data sitting on? Uh, how long does it take to retrieve? Uh, you know, what kind of a restoration timing? What kind of methodology and so on? What's the RTO? What's the RPO? And these are the two uh, team, IT ops and the SAC ops. And of course, you know, if you have compromised uh, backups and you lost the confidence in recovery, you have no choice. You have to eliminate the business downtime. You have to Im eliminate the, the loss in transactions, you know, uh, breach of compliance in, in mishandling of the data. You have no choice but to pay ransom, which we, we have observed in uh, many environment, right? In, in, in many situations today um, in the news. And how long does it take? Right, so very often seven, you know, to uh, 14 days uh, of a uh, downtime, that's quite common uh, that we have seen in, uh, in many of these attacks. So at secure, with security at the data point, um, at this point, the decision-making will be very different, right? So if you have these two teams together, able to en enable the cross-team collaboration, able, able to streamline uh, the collaboration between these two teams and accelerate the remediation process, right? So, so that uh, IT ops and SEC ops can come together, assess the magnitude of the impact, quickly identify uh, which mission critical data, what well, the mission critical data that has been uh, compromised, how fast you are able to recover, and um, you know, as discover the sensitive data and to be able to recover uh, at scale. So, this, these are the key. Um, uh, considerations uh, in when we talk about security at the point of data. So what are the pain points moving forward, right? So many of you might have encountered and this might resonate uh, with many organizations uh, put together, you know, across uh, three, three different key roles, right? So these three different roles might have uh, challenges uh, in their, you know, preparations uh, in, uh, you know, combating the ransomware, uh, in their preparations in uh, preparing the plan for uh, remediations of the ransomware, right? SecOps is the first role. Um, very often they have to involve in the prioritizations of vulnerabilities and gaps, right? So how are you ensuring the effectiveness of uh, detection tools, uh, detecting anomalies in your, in your environment, right? So very often encounter uh, challenges like infrequent and superficial pen testing capabilities. How are you having the isolated uh, right environment, right sets of data for pen testing, right set of environments for pen testing? And of course, application team, right? The load of uh, uh, patching tasks very often uh, bog them down, a uh, change management complexity, lacking of agility in the uh, DevSecOps, right? So that's, that's currently a key uh, messaging that we've seen. Sorry, is that is there a question from someone on the ground? And of course, uh, the CXO, SO, uh, CXOs, and that's of, very often being concerned with uh, TCO, uh, increasing uh, spending while decreasing the KPI performance. Um, uh, those are the challenges they are facing. There's lack of collaboration among different teams to be able to put to, together a very effective team, a uh, very effective plan. And primitive incident response training is one of the key challenges as well. So this pain point, those are the pain points that is really uh, perpetrated by, by the risk of a downtime associated uh, with identifying and eliminating a root causes. So let's uh, put those uh, that we have discussed and uh, into perspective and ask ourselves some questions. How can we do better? right, to prepare organization for ransomware attack, which is very often uh, driving our day-to-day -day conversations with customers and prospects in, uh, in the current year of uh, 2021. How can organizations understand and best response to ransomware attack, right? Just feel free to uh, drop your thoughts into the, uh, into the chat as well, right? So if you have some, um, something that you would like to share. One of the greatest uh, barriers for ransomware security adoptions, some of them is coming from, you know, outside of just, uh, you know, just the data itself, but you're looking at ho a holistic view. How can you build a multi-layer of defense, right? 
holistically across the en entire environment? How can we make it more difficult for ransomware actors to carry out an attack, right? So beside the, from the parameters all the ways to applications to data, how can we do more on protecting your data, right? Security at the point of data, how can we make out uh, make the uh, outcome of a ransomware attack less destructive? How fast are we able to remediate? And are you working towards having a ransomware remediation plan? Right, so that's, you'll be surprised that uh, many organizations are still having, a, you know, without a very uh, clear clue of uh, how can they derive at some of these questions. So these are really driving the new data imperatives. And of course, uh, security and compliance are top priorities. Uh, cyber resiliency is really um, uh, driving new thoughts and new thinking about how they can better protect the data, the new way of uh, data protection uh, platforms. And uh, of course, that's very important to really understand how you can impose better security the moment you ingest your data for data protection, data at rest, uh, within your data management platform for protection, how can you manage the data lifecycle with end-to-end -end encryptions, right? Beside data address encryptions within uh, the, the data protection platform itself, as you manage the data lifecycle from on-prems and in the cloud, uh, how can you gain better visibility and control across different stages of the data lifecycle, right? How can you transit data from on-prem in the cloud for long-term retention with better uh, encryption policies, uh, you know, better security in place. And of course, you can't do that with the, the legacy kind of uh, approach. You need to have a modernized uh, and scalable and highly automated platforms, right? So, so as to be able to manage data uh, at scale and to be able to manage data uh, with a massive recovery at scale, uh, with a scale, right, as compared to a a single dependency on a master, a single dependency on a single catalog and so on. And of course, uh, we, we, are, we are taking into considerations and nowadays customers are really looking at multi-hybrid cloud environments for, from a cost perspective. So let's take a, a step back, look at the key principles of data protection, right? When it comes to cyber resiliency, right? So there's three key pillars that we are looking at. Uh, first is air gap, right? So many customers, when we talk about air gap, the first thing that come across the mind is that, hey, you know, tape is the best way to have a physical air gap. I, I perform a tape out and I just career it to the remote site. I perform a electronic means of a tape voting, right? That's not too bad, right? So you have a tape at a, at the remote site, but don't forget one thing. For tape technology, as you increase the performance, you are increase the performance of backup, you're decreasing the performance for recovery, right? So for those who, who understand the uh, tape-based technology, um, the, the notions of multi multiplexing to, to increase the uh, backup performance and so on. And you're having challenges in retrieving, you know, and understanding what are the data residing on which, which piece of the tape um, you know, uh, how, how long does it take to uh, retrieve back from a remote site? How long does it take to recover? And the most important things to take note in the legacy system or the traditional backup architectures, there's normally three tier, right? They have a backup mechanisms and a storage component, but the catalog that is still sitting on, on the file system, they're still sitting on a master, single master on a file system, and some of them are sitting on the third party database going complex procedures to secure that catalog. So those, those increases the uh, surface area for attack as well. And the second thing, the immutability is key, right? So immutability doesn't mean that uh, only that it cannot be deleted. It, can, it can't be edited and it can't, uh, it can't be uh, encrypted. So that's the most important things that we, when we take immutability into considerations, right? So it has to be able to ensure data verification, data validations, and continuous, continuous validation within the system itself, and built in zero trust uh, design, zero trust architectures, right? So that's very key, right? The traditional uh, approach, you trust everything, but you verify. Uh, the, the kind of designs that we put in, we really take all these three key considerations into our design.
So let's let's uh, take a look at uh, the uh, comparison. Uh, you know, put that into perspective: a uh, traditional architecture versus rubric uh, zero trust architecture, right? So with a traditional architectures, of course, as I mentioned, you have a, a, a single catalog dependency. You go through different multiple components. It could be a proxies in a virtual cloud environments, media managers, tape base, or this base backup for increasing your uh, recovery times objective. With Rubrik, there isn't a concept of storage unit, right? So there isn't a concept of storage unit. You provide a logical air gap without you sacrificing a performance, compromising the performance, a logical air gaps. We are we're building in a, a distributed immutable file systems, right? You can't change anything as you build it. The blockchain like kind of a, a, a format within rubric distributed file system itself, right? So, and additionally, we built in a multi-factor authentication with a time-based one-time password. We get into that in, in a short while. So how it really works, right? So uh, we deliver Rubrik solutions with a modernized data protection architecture. It's a scale-out architecture, consolidating a leg legacy architecture into a single software fabric, right? So that eliminates the multi-components of, uh, you know, media, master, uh, copy data management, continuous data protection components into a single software fabric. We put it into a scale architecture. A simple platform built for a lower TCO that is natively integrated with cloud and securing and with complete visibility and control of the data across the entire data lifecycle, right? And it's uh, most important thing, uh, API-driven automations. And data is always available and immutable. We build in an immutable distributed file system as we ingest the data uh, we build a snapshot chain. I mentioned that's a blockchain-like kind of a format, right? And we always perform a two layers of checksum, right? That is logical stripe and a physical chunk layer. And the resulting fingerprint, we always store alongside with the data, the snapshot chain, and distribute it across the all nodes within the distributed file system. And we put that together with a zero trust architecture to safeguard um, the data. And I mentioned that there isn't a storage unit concept, right? So the distributed, the distributed immutable file system is sitting on a fuse layer, which is a file system at a user layer. And you assess the file system through a POSIX compliant API, right? So there isn't, um, uh, you have, uh, there isn't a, a, a external service that can assess the file system directly. And we, we actually um, pre-configure the IP tables to allow only rubric services to be able to assess all services within the, uh, the cluster itself. And all nodes communication within the cluster itself is via TLS 1.2, secure and trusted channels, right? No external services are actually allowed, right? So it's built in totally with a, a zero trust cluster design. And on top of that, we go beyond just simply uh, data protection. We build in forensic and intelligent layer to be able to detect anomalies to help our customers to understand the scope of attack, analyze whether a sensitive data or a regulated data is impacted, right? So we, we built in more intelligence to be able to detect sensitive data uh, that we build against the compliance policy, right? So we further accurate uh, the, the detections of the so sensitive data with a machine learning approach, uh, with a natural language pr processing, uh, with regular expressions and additional uh, checksum validation as well. And furthermore, I, I think uh, we, for those who are following a uh, rubric, right, so we have uh, built in API integrations with SIEM and SAW platforms that drive collaborations with, across two different teams, IT op and SecOps. I mentioned about these two teams uh, trying to, uh, with two different cultures and skill set, uh, trying to put their brains together uh, to assess the magnitude impact in case of any outage. So we are, we are, we are uh, trying to address the issues, trying to streamline the incident response uh, speed, right, by putting the solutions together, integrating into SIEM and SAW platforms. And of course, instant recovery. Right, so as, as we are able to design a scale architectures, 
uh, you can then light mount on our flash tier as you increase the numbers of nodes, it increases the, uh, uh, the speed for recovery, uh, providing a fast granular recovery or bulk recovery from the most recent clean versions, including orchestration, uh, orchestrated run books. So the issues with ransomware, right? So I mentioned earlier, uh, according to the CrowdStrike uh, survey, um, it comes out to be an average of seven days to recover, right? To a maximum of 14 days. That's a tremendous amount of downtime uh, for the businesses, right? So the lot, not only the loss of uh, the, the transaction, but impact on your image, uh, branding image as well. And not to even, even mention about the, uh, you know, the mishandling of data due to compliance that could be even resulting uh, a longer term in impact in terms of the uh, company image and, and loss of incomes, right? So one very key things that you have to always ask is your last line of defense secure? Are you able to assess the magnitude of impact effectively, right? So when we put these two teams together, the IT ops and the SEC ops, how fast are you able to identify where are the problems? How fast are you able to execute a remediation plan? Data exfiltrations is driving a new way that we combat, the new way we combat um, a ransomware, right? So the, um, it's not just about uh, encrypting the data, right? So there's also a rise in, in terms of a double extortion that's going on. So bad actor threatened to publish potentially told stolen data to increase the pressure for ransom payment. And of course, uh, that caused a lengthy downtime. There could be a compliance issue with PII, PHI data leakage, and a brand damage, lawsuits, right, mishandling of data, and so on. So that's how we are really uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, helping our customers to really uh, build a defense in depth approach. Uh, you know, this, these are the three key pillars in building a ransomware remediation plan. Right, having an immutable backup, right? So immutable uh, backup architectures with uh, three key pillars of uh, immutability. Distributed immutable file system, zero trust cluster design, end-to-end -end API authentication, right? So this put together an immutable architectures. And with the intelligence layer, we'll be able to help our customers do impact visibility, right? So you have not only that you have control, but to be able to have visibility of your data across the entire data lifecycle. And with our scale architectures and live mount capabilities on the flash tier, we give customers a mass um, recovery at scale with our instant recovery capabilities. To put uh, what they've run through uh, in, into perspective, we actually built a layers of defense again compromised at the point of data, right? So the, the, the zero trust architect uh, the architectures designed with end-to-end -end encryptions and immutable file system form the three key pillars in the immutability. And on top of that, very often we are asking, uh, you know, CISO and the uh, infra team, how are you preventing, right, a root admin from compromising or a root admin from changing a retention policy? As we know that uh, ransomware and bad actors are getting more intelligence. The attacks are getting more sophisticated. They're trying to learn the, um, to, to get into the administrative access of the last line of defense, right? So backup system is the ID that you key in. It's just, um, it doesn't have facial recognition. It's just uh, recognizing the ID and the password. Once you get into that, you can make any changes. And we introduce a retention lock, which is a SEC and a FINRA compliant. You can't simply unlock it uh, with any root admin ID access, right? So un to unlock it, that is the uh, our unique process to be, to actually raise a support case, and its rubric was we will actually validate uh, the compliance and authorize uh, signature before we actually grant and uh, help to unlock uh, to be able to gain the unlock and change the retention policies. So that is actually ad additional security measures to prevent any compromise at the uh, uh, administrative layer. And on top of that, we also put in a multi-factor time-based one-time password. And this is really unique uh, in the sense that we are not just putting this on the UI itself, but we are putting this across CLI, UI, 
and into our cloud uh, native data protections platform as well. So end-to-end -end data protections and security measures in place against uh, compromised. So looking into the intelligence layer, what if your data could uh, give you a better insight, right? So that's how we are creating more intelligence with our machine learning data services. As we perform the snapshots, we create this analytical metadata. We are able to harness this metadata with our trained ML model, analyze the metadata from the snapshots that are being ingested, detect any anomalies we compare the current snapshots uh, to the previous snapshots to be able to understand, you know, what are the outliers? If there's any anomalies, we go into content level analysis, making use of heuristic entropy algorithms and drill into the, uh, the file systems and to help our customers to really understand in granular what are the impacts. And you call, can actually, that actually helps them to be able to streamline the remediation process to understand what's the last known good state for ransomware recovery. So this is something that we have uh, um, further, sorry for losing of the, uh, the headline. So due to some formatting, right? So that's uh, actually a, a new uh, dashboards that we came out with in, uh, in the Polaris, which is the um, radar for ransomware detections, right? So we have improved ML models to increase the accuracy and better performance. There's new dashboards that's providing a global visibility of unusual file system uh, activities, the investigations and recovery of anomalous objects, right? And of course, with AppFlow, uh, that really allows customers to be able to build a blueprint on how you want to orchestrate the recovery between apps, databases, and webs. And getting into SIEM and uh, syslog integrations for radar anomalies, we also have enriched intelligence via radar and sonar metadata for SecOps, right? That includes the, uh, the latest and greatest integrations with uh, Cortex XOR uh, by Palo Alto Networks to orchestrate the in incidents and response, right? So what the screens that you're looking at here, right here on the left side, that's a radar uh, dashboard. And on, on the right-hand side, that's a SecOps uh, team uh, dashboards uh, based on the Cortex XOR Palo Alto network. So we have built in uh, integration, integration such as we enriched the metadata, the information with our metadata ingestions into the uh, Cortex Excel, and to be able to enrich those informations to help to streamline the recovery with the customized playbook, right? So you can ex execute the playbook and uh, perform the remediations within the Cortex Excel platform. So something that I want to uh, really showcase that uh, something that we have done in the U.S. Departments of Defense and the, uh, with the comprehensiveness in terms of um, the end-to-end -end security uh, certifications as what earned us into the, uh, the first data protection, data management platforms that is listed in the U.S. Departments of Defense, uh, APL, right? So when we also have integrated um, uh, solutions, uh, in terms of uh, cyber BR, BR, right? So that is something that we work together with our uh, alliance solutions to be able to stand up and bubble up and isolated um, uh, network environments with isolated data domain, a replica copies of exactly what's in the uh, production's environment, a clone copy of a uh, production's environment to be the conducts uh, cyber threat hunting task, right? So you'll be able to perform a, a threat hunting task on a, a isolated and a secure environment such that it's in, able to improve uh, and the frequencies of the pen testing, right? Helping the site ops to be able to improve the frequency of pen testing and increase the accuracy of the uh, cyber threats hunting. Right, so from there, there's a security notification alarms from a, a Polaris and other tools and there's concurrent sand, sandbox to test remediations and validates the security control. And these are the uh, isolated environments that you can have um, a more cyber hunting uh, tools to, to put in place to perform a cyber hunting uh, activities. And what's the outcome, 
right? So I mentioned about the challenges, the pinpoint across the three different roles. The outcomes is really is to be able to uh, give the, uh, you know, the three different roles risk-free, aggressive pen, 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 pen testing for the, uh, the SecOps team, prioritizations of our remediations, detections of validations, and out automated and repeatable process for your uh, SecOps uh, procedures. And of course, on-demand uh, development testing and QA, right, since you are able to uh, light mouth the exact environments of your productions in a, a secure and isolated um, a domain, that really allows the application team to, to perform more agile their set ops, right? And of course, improve KPI metrics for the security and their ops, right? So that's proven the IR plan with a robust training capabilities. So just some of the uh, testimony from uh, our customers, I think uh, we have played the City of Durham uh, video earlier, right? So there's more storylines that you can see you can find in the in the public website as well. Uh, feel free to check out uh, check out and um, that's the end of my uh, current slide, right? So sorry for the overrunning of the uh, in terms of the timing, right? So we have uh, delivered a very compelling business value, not just performing data protection, but also uh, helping our customers to really build a layer of intelligence to help to mitigate data risk with our machine learning uh, uh, data, data driven uh, services, right? So, so today, right, I will urge uh, every one of you to start think about those uh, review questions on building uh, and starting to plan for a ransomware remediation plan with a more uh, secure and uh, intelligent data management plat platforms, having control and visibility of data cycle from end to end. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Great session, so really appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Let's take uh, question answers now. So I see about five people have, six people have raised their hands. So we will unmute you guys and you can come live and ask your questions. So Mr. Dinesh Kaushik, go ahead and ask your question. Next is Sakshi in line. Sakshi, you are allowed to uh, unmute yourself. Go ahead and please ask your question. Next is Sijo who has got hand raised. You got to be quick guys. Mr. Ashok Kumar. Mr. Mahesh Kumbhavat. Hello. Yeah, Mahesh, go ahead, please. Hello, sir. Vikasa, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak a few words in front of you. No problem, sir. Absolutely. Please go ahead and ask your question. So my question is uh, 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 the contracts for the world. So how can we going to be uh, uh, collaboration? How are we going to be connected by this rubric? Do we require some licensing or sort of things? What is the uh, connectivity uh, with the uh, Alto contracts with the rubric? And what functionality is going to work? Shall I take the uh, the questions uh, answers right now or after the uh, the audience after the, uh, the more questions? No, no. Go ahead. We'll do okay. one question answer. That's how it is. Okay. Sure. One question at a time. Yeah. Very good question. Um, yeah. So that the first thing is the licensing. Um, there's no additional licensing that's being charged for the integration. Right, so the SIEM integration, the SAW integrations that we have, uh, there is no additional licensing uh, required. So the integrations happens between a radar Polaris SAS. Uh, we actually use API to pull uh, the, the information into Cortex XOR, right? So there's actually a plugins that we, we have deployed and that actually enriched uh, the informations within the XOR uh, platforms. And that's also built in a playbook uh, within the platform itself. I hope that answered the questions. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yep. Mr. Abhishek Mathur, next, please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, I, I have a similar question actually, the previous one about licensing. But how is, uh, just to add to that question, uh, how Azure, uh, how it works with Azure in like type, type of environment, public cloud environments, the licensing part? That's my question. Thank you, Vikas, for allowing me to ask the question. 
Yes, uh, I think I, I have uh, sort of uh, briefly answered that, um, you know, from a rubric pers perspective, there isn't a, I'm answering from a rubric perspective, right? So um, let me clarify the intelligent layer, right? It's actually sitting on a SAS, right? So that is the radar for anomalies detections and sonar for compliance, right? So that's actually sitting on our Polaris SAS. Right, so within the Polaris SAS itself, uh, what happens is that the integrations happens between the Polaris API and the Cortex, right? So you have a plugins and that set up the, uh, uh, the authentications, of course, and you, you're using the APIs to pull information and that actually helps to populate the, uh, the, the information within the Cortex XOR. So from a licensing perspective, right, we don't have any additional charges, but of course you have to have radar and sonar on a rubric polaris uh, license and that is uh, have that running in operations before you actually uh, set up the integrations between uh, XOR and and uh, rubric polaris great uh, yeah. next is uh, mr jay daga jay bhai please go ahead ask your question hey, hi hi class hi so hi education so hi, uh, my, there are two parts of my question. One is, uh, so we have got an uh, ecosystem wherein we have got the SaaS-based uh, applications on-premise as well as some which are hosted in cloud. So how do we kind of uh, use this to complement the security of these uh, various uh, application ecosystem? Second is, since we have got different applications, we are also looking at having integration middleware, uh, likes of IIB, MQ, or uh, AWS Lambda. So is there a way that we can kind of complement or help this data protection into this uh, ecosystem? Right, so uh, let me just uh, repeat uh, to ensure that I get a right understanding. So you are, you are, what you're asking and you're looking into is that to have that kind of a similar kind of a intelligence uh, for those, for the uh, workloads that's running in the cloud uh, instead of just on-prem. Am I right to say that? Yeah. Okay. So as of now, um, what I've shown, right, is really the data protection uh, on-prem. Um, those data snapshots and data have been ingested into Rubrik CDM platform. And um, uh, Polaris having the additional intelligence in the, in the cloud SaaS service uh, to be able to harness the metadata. So uh, in, the, in the subsequent uh, future roadmaps, we are looking into how we can bring that intelligence into the cloud um, cloud native data protection workload. Today, we do have built in a cloud native approach to be able to replicate across account and region to provide that kind of uh, isolation, right? Of course, there's um, encryptions uh, built in into, uh, into, uh, into the design as well as to be integrates with the uh, local en encryptions. So um, the intelligence layers is something that we are looking into the futures to give our customer the seamless uh, experience like what they are doing in on-prem and replicates that in the cloud as well. Hope that answer your questions. Yeah, thanks. Great right. for that uh, roadmap. Right. Great. Last question we can take. Uh, Dr. Chitranjan Kesri, go ahead and ask your question, please. Please tell me, tell me that um, how different is this product from other computers? If suppose someone is going to recover from certain days, how you are going to recover in the future hours or one? Uh, your voice is not very clear. I'm not sure. So if you could understand the question. So, uh, my question is, uh, Vikas, uh, we suppose someone is recovered our assets on within seven days or six days if we say, how do we is going to recover in 24 hours or one day? What, what difference you people start doing? My, my apologies. I'm still not able to comprehend yeah, that uh, please, question. Please put it on chat and then we will see if we can answer. Yeah. Uh, let, let, let's take one more question in the uh, so Sijo Jose, I'm going to unmute you. Please go ahead and ask your question. Sijo. Yeah, I think uh, he might have raised hand by mistake. So I, I think that's about it. We cannot take more questions. Six o'clock. As I said, we might take 10 more minutes today uh, when we started the session. So 
uh, now we are done with the Q&A. We are done with the great session that So has presented. Uh, thanks a lot, So, for joining in. Thank you. Uh, sharing Thank this you session so much. And joining yeah. over a weekend. Really appreciate that. Okay, guys. Yeah, great to be here. I'm, I'm very honored and excited to be here. All right. Thanks it's a lot. prestigious uh, platform. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks a lot. So we have, we have about 215 participants right now. We saw the peak of 230, but yeah, five, 10 people dropped out. So guys, the wheel of fortune we will do at the end. And as we said, there are five Apple AirPods to be given away. One is going to be wheel of fortune. And the, the four are going to be as part of the LinkedIn contest that we explained during uh, when we started the session. So if you join late, I'm going to explain it one more time because I want to give fair chance to everyone to attend, to, you know, participate in this contest. These are the contest rules. The first rule is, or the first step is go to LinkedIn and follow elite CISO's handle. So you have to search for elite CISO uh, and add it to your contact or follow elite CISO uh, handle. Second is you have to follow rubric handle on LinkedIn. And third step and the most important step is you have to post the participation certificate on LinkedIn. Okay, I'm going to share the secret and I will tell you how to download the, the certificate. And then you have to upload that certificate on LinkedIn. And then you have to share your learning from the session. Okay, whatever So has explained, whatever Ritesh explained, you, you, you know, uh, I shared in the beginning itself that you have to take good documentation, good notes, and then share your learning on LinkedIn uh, with that certificate. So post certificate, post your learning in that LinkedIn post and tag Elite CISO and Rubric, okay? This is what you got to do. And then once you upload that, you have to submit the uh, that URL on a completion form. I'm going to share a Google form where you have to upload your URL, right? I will show you the form as well. Uh, so you have to submit that form. And then this contest is only for 100 posts. So you have to post it and then send your URL as a completion form. So I'm going to show you the process. So be quick guys. I'm sure you would have taken the notes and all. So first I'm going to share you how you can download your participation certificate. So to download your participation certificate, go to Elite CISO's website, click on events, click on upcoming events. You will come to this screen and you will see that, okay, this is what the session we went through today. Click on CPE certificate password or CPE certificate link. Okay. Once you click on this link, you have, you will come to this page. You have to give your email address. It could be personal email address, official, whatever you like. Put that, give your full name and the secret to download the password is Enigma. E-N-I-G-M-A. Okay. Password to download the certificate is Enigma. Why Enigma? Because this week, this week on 15th July 1928, Enigma decoded the first message of the German cipher. Okay, that's what the significance of today's uh, of this week is. Okay, so what you got to do is I'm explaining one more time. I think 80% of people already attend our webinars, but rest 20% I'm explaining again so that you are also clear on the process. Go to, go to Elite CISO's website, click on events, go to upcoming events, come to this section, click on CP certificate. You will come to a page, something like this, put your email address, put your full name and the password is Enigma. Once you, once you fill this form, you will get a certificate like this. Okay. This is your participation certificate. Download the certificate, upload the certificate on LinkedIn with your post. Okay. Whatever learnings you have put it on the LinkedIn and then I am going to share this form with you. Okay. I'm going to put it on the chat. So you have to fill this form. And when you fill this form, you have to give your full name, your email address, organization, designation, phone number, <coughs> and the LinkedIn URL of your post. Okay. Whatever you posted on LinkedIn, you have to submit that URL over here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to post the URL over here for everyone. So this is the link to submit your completion form once you are done with the LinkedIn post. Okay. The somebody is asking for password. So password is again E-N-I-G-M-A Enigma. 
I hope that it is clear now what the process is going to look like. It is very simple. Just follow Elite CISO, follow Rubric, upload your certificate, upload your learnings, and then once you have uploaded everything, you just have to copy the URL. How do you copy the URL? I will show you if you are not clear. Let's say you have made any post. You can simply just click on these three dots and then you can copy it from there. Okay. If you click on this, you can click this copy to post and this URL you have to submit in the feedback form. Okay. So the feedback form that I had shown you. I think the process should be clear now. Uh, this was the form that I had shared. So you have to post that link over here. Okay. I think it should be clear enough. Uh, let me see if there are any questions on the chat. A uh, form link I have posted. I'm going to post it again. So this is what the form link is. Repeat the last step. Parminder ji, last step is that uh, let me come back to this guy. Close it from here. So last step is once you post on LinkedIn, right? Whatever post you have made on LinkedIn, copy the URL, copy the URL from there. Go to the feedback form that I have posted. I already see three people have already shared. Uh, so yeah, just fill this form, put your LinkedIn URL over here and simply say submit. So three people have already submitted because this was just a test. So Deepak has posted, Abhay has posted, so very nice. We will review all the posts which are going to be there. And then by Friday next week, by Friday next week, we will take a call who the winner is, right? So we will pick four best posts and we will share Apple AirPods uh, to the winners. I think that's about it. And the last thing that everybody may be waiting for is the wheel of fortune okay so wheel of fortune giveaway this time is apple airports uh, thanks rubri for sponsoring five airports uh, for the participants so i'm going to spin this wheel if you are there in the session you will have to come on camera and uh, show your aadhar card if you're from india so that we can verify you are you are what you are saying you are okay good luck everyone i'm going to spin it now Let's see who the lucky winner is going to be. Satish Bhai, very nice. Satish Bhai, congratulations. Satish Bhai is very active uh, fitness enthusiast. He is, he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, Satish Bhai, if you are there, go to the chat and say, yes, you are there. Satish Bhai, if you are attending, go to the chat and say yes, and then I will unmute you. Oh boy, you are not there. Satish Bhai is there. Great, Satish Bhai. I am going to unmute you. So you have to come on camera now. Okay, let me do that. Okay, participants, Satish Papnoi allowed to talk and more uh, promote to panelists as well. Okay, Satish Bhai, go ahead, come on camera. So that we can thank verify. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just checking where the camera is. Thanks, Satish Bhai. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank it's you. Thank you, very much. Side, thank you. Left side below, sir. Yeah, he got it. He got it. I think I can uh, yeah, yeah. you can turn it on, nothing like it. If you cannot, then it's fine. I'm familiar of your profile. No, I, I, I can I can I can just see uh, you know uh, the mute, unmute, and nothing else. No camera. Oh, I, That's okay. Uh, I promoted. Oh, you yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it now. Cool. Great. I think I think that's cool. So we will meet on twenty fifth. And guys, why we are meeting on twenty fifth? Because at Elite CISO, we run a very active fitness community, and you will see Satish Bhai is already there. I mean, uh, you will see his post out there. So. Uh, uh, as I say in every webinar, right? Elite CISO is very uh, community oriented uh, uh, platform. So if you want to join yoga sessions or a fitness session, go ahead to this page uh, under social initi initiatives, CISO fitness and fill this form. We do yoga every, uh, every day, uh, Monday to Saturday in morning, 6.30 to 7.30. If you want to join your fellow colleagues, go ahead and do that. 
and then on 25th we are going to complete 200 days of fitness that's where uh, we will meet satish bhai and hand over the apple airpods with this uh, thanks everyone for joining in on your saturday taking out 1 hour 10 minutes 15 minutes a uh, special thanks to rubric team for phenomenal session uh, Thank thanks you. a lot for joining us and sharing a uh, rubric standpoint in terms of how do you protect from ransomware and uh, uh, sharing the product details with with the participants so thank you very much i have let's stay for five more minutes if anybody has got any question on the chat we can answer that and then we can end the session so on the chat all i'm saying is the exam is not currently accepting submissions okay let me check i think lot of people have already submitted lot of people are saying congrats sudesh bhai so that's cool i think that's about it it's already 610 so thanks everyone for joining see you guys uh, next week on thursday thanks bye thank you everyone thank see you bye bye